You gonna help me? Huh? You gonna help me with the bees? You're gonna lay right there while I have the bees. Okay, that's fine. Hello friends and fellow bee lovers. Welcome back to Windwalker Farm. Our bee yard or apiary if you're feeling fancy. I'm gonna try not to wave my hands around too much because these girls are always already checking out what I'm doing here. Today is June 8th. It is very hot. Our temperatures this weekend might reach 100 degrees. Plus our humidity in Central Florida is pretty brutal. So, um, in today's video, I am going to try and explain what I think now has actually been happening in Hive 1. Um, last week I put it up, out a video, oh no, what happened to my queens? Because for a few weeks now, I've been pretty convinced that this hive went queenless. Um, on May 18th, okay, right there up with me. Uh, I think I'm going to find a different spot to talk. Okay, hopefully this is far enough away. They won't get too peeved at me when it's here. Um, I actually did the <laughs> inspection for today on that hive, so they're a little riled up. So in my Oh No video, which was now two weeks ago on May 25th, we saw the last of the capped brood emerging, and I wasn't seeing any new brood on there, which is what made me think they were queenless. But you saw also, every time I picked up a frame, I said this. Nectar. Nectar pollen. Some nectar, some pollen. More nectar. More pollen. A lot of pollen in this frame. This frame has a lot of nectar, a lot of honey. This frame is honey. Or heavy. Heavy with probably honey. Probably all nectar. Nectar, nectar, nectar. All nectar and pollen all over the place. Because we have been, our spring honey flow here has been incredible. Now, I had put a honey super on there, uh, on top of the main brood box, more than a month ago, but since I'm brand new, none of my honey frames are drawn out, which means when I put a brand new frame in there, the bees have to build all that comb to have a place to store food. and. The honey flow was so strong, or the nectar flow was so strong this spring that the bees were didn't have places to store it all, proper places, and they were storing it in the brood comb and basically squeezing the queen out. So let me show you a little bit of a what would have been last week's inspection, and you can see obviously I found something and you can see my train of thought start to change so roll that beautiful bee footage oh look at this we have brood cat brood and larva see my theory was if I was fully prepared to stack. See, look, I even made a special shim. I gotta show you this. And we have more cat brood. Now, as of last week, we didn't have a single piece of cat brood. And now I've got larvae in here. C shaped larva. Some small two or three day old larva. Pupa being capped. I'm gonna step over here and show you this for a minute. 
This was my shim that I made. See, I got this. Went my, made my husband buy a newspaper. I made some sugar water put on it. Got my knife to poke holes in it. I made this special shim. Because I always am afraid that when you put the newspaper trick, and I see people, when they grab the other hive, then I'm, I'm like, what's to stop the newspaper from blowing away? Or bees from getting up in there? So I made this shim. So I could put the newspaper on there and then put this over to hold the newspaper down. Then I could set the other box in there. I wouldn't have to worry about how it was aimed because I've got a guide and they would have their own little entrance and landing board until they recombine. And I thought it was so clever and I was gonna be so prepared to do this operation that inevitably, Me being so prepared makes it so that I don't have to use all the stuff I prepared for that emergency. If I hadn't been prepared, these bees would still be queenless. That's just the bee karma. Enough chit chat. Let's see what is on frame three. Still a very light frame. Last time I was in this hive, I saw the last of the brood hatching. Now we've got brood, larva. I almost didn't do this inspection today. I'm pretty glad I did. there and there are larva in the cells around them so what I found in that inspection on frames two four and five where I'm finally seeing brand new uh, larva and cat brood which means for that brood to be capped, brood doesn't get capped till it's been there for nine days. So some of that had to have been there on the 25th and I just missed it. Now let's look at what I saw today. And after that, I'm gonna tell you why I'm still just a tiny, tiny bit worried about what's going on. No, I'm not gonna open the gate. Daddy's not out there yet. Come on. Come on. Almost fully capped. Like one of these frames. I'm gonna end up pulling out of here to extract. Okay, I want to see, I want to see brood. Mm -hmm. 
evidence that we have a queen. nectar in these cells. But they're not all full. Last week we saw, I think, was about ready to hatch. Or this brood was just getting capped over. So they might still be a week from hatching out. That brood on this side of the frame. That's older. So she probably moved from that side to this side with the egg laying. six days old. This, I think, I don't want a flashlight to really see. seeing eggs. It's hard to tell if you're seeing eggs or reflections. We've got very young larvae here. It kind of makes sense that those are eggs. will stay an egg for 48 hours and she lays enough eggs to where if she was on that frame, side of a frame laying eggs she could be two frames down by now It's just barely milky white. Got a hatched egg in those. So 
to that brood. That brood is only a few days old. Seeing some eggs here. This frame is mostly resources, but the cells are dry. Possibly they could use that as a brood frame. Baby girl, why you whine? Go to the back door. She, she's waiting at the gate for you the whole time. Whining. And just Sometimes she's being patient. Yeah. So just last week, I was talking to other beekeepers in the area and I just learned this term honey bound hives which is what I'm pretty sure has been going on and because of our strong nectar flow a couple of our keepers in our area are having the same issue so we still have eggs we have a lot of brood now we have larva bee of the they're moving honey up into the honey super. There's room now in the brood box. Our spring flow is actually ebbed a little, but we are about to have um, palm trees blooming. And Florida has a lot of palm trees, so I expect the, the palm nectar flow is gonna be just a boom too. Um, So we have our queen still. She's doing a good job laying, there's plenty of room, but there's still one more week before I'm gonna be able to feel completely comfortable with that hive. Um, and that is because 
we did have a brood break, which means the amount of capped brood, uh, when I saw the last of that brood emerging, it takes 21 days from worker bee to go from egg to coming out of the capping. And two weeks ago, I saw the last of the capped brood emerging and I hadn't seen any eggs, any, any new eggs at that point. But then in last week inspection, I saw a cat brood, which means that there had been eggs on that frame. But that cat brood then is probably about nine days old. Okay, do some math with me. That means before that brood will hatch, it's gonna be another 11 days. And this is why I'm worried. The royal jelly that the queen eats and the, what gets fed to the larva when it's in its first few days, is that royal jelly is only produced by the nurse bees. And the nurse bees are the very, very youngest bees. Once they hatch out, they become nurse bees. They've got special glands in their heads, they can produce the royal jelly for about five days. And I'm hoping maybe longer, because that means since the last brood hatched and from when that brood that is now 16 days old hatches in about five days, there's going to be a little gap, possibly of bees that can produce royal jelly. So we don't want our queen to starve to death this week, basically, is the last potential danger week. So next week, I'll know if I can be completely comfortable with that. Now, I said I'd tell you what I might have should have done. I, I had the honey super on there, so I thought, well, they've got a place to put honey, but it took them time to build that comb out. And our nectar flow was so strong that the worker bees were just bringing in so much nectar that they basically crowded out the brood box. Now, if I'd have realized that's what was happening three weeks ago, say, um, and I just learned this talking to the, my bee guru, um, I could have taken a frame of already drawn comb from the brood box with no, I would have, you have to check that it definitely doesn't have any larva or queen on it. Uh, probably a honey frame or a resource frame. And take your spiky bra, uncapper and uncap it and take that frame and go set it in a tree a couple dozen yards from where your hive is and other bees from your apiary. Basically they're going to rob that cleaning. You know, they'll take some of it back there and store it in other spots, but what you're going to wind up with is a clean, empty, fully drawn comb that now you could put back in the middle of the brood box and for sure they have a place to lay. Now they may fill it back up with nectar but especially if you've seen your queen and you know she's there and it looks like they're going through a brood break and you've got all that nectar basically you need to give them space to lay. So hope that helps somebody. Um, my newbie mistakes things that I will learn better next time is to maybe anticipate getting honey supers on there earlier and of course next year I'll have fully drawn out comb that I'll save I won't scrape it off I'll when I when I extract any honey I'm gonna leave as much of the comb as possible so they don't have to go through the building of the comb again If you like this, give me a like, thumbs up, and subscribe so 
next time maybe we'll get into the spicy girls hive well i'm gonna get into the spicy girls hive today but maybe in the next video i'll let you know how their queen is doing i'm about to see a good laying pattern but if this is the end of the video y'all have a great week and thank you for watching so much